It has been over 90 days since I purchased the Mac Mini M1 with 16 gigabytes of RAM to replace my 2016 MacBook Pro. In this video, I'm gonna share my honest review, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and if I regret buying the Mac Mini M1. Thank you for everyone that has hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you. And if you are visiting this channel for the very first time, I'm Ryan and this is The Elevate Project. To help professionals like you elevate your remote office with tech and be more confident and engaging delivering online presentations working from home. So I chose the Mac Mini M1 to replace my trusty MacBook Pro, mainly because with the pandemic, I wanted a stable, reliable desktop computer and I invested in a great monitor, keyboard and mouse working from home full time as a remote worker. I have been using my MacBook Pro as a desktop plugged in literally for the last 18 months. I originally wanted to upgrade to a Mac Pro, which in my mind would be a Mac that would last me for many years based on my current workflow waiting and watching for Apple events and what Apple was releasing. In 2020, Apple released an updated Mac Mini with the M1 chip. I didn't think much of it till in 2021, review after review after review and performance dance revealed the Mac Mini M1 could be possibly my next computer. The common issues in performance were on software that was not made by Apple. Apple is known to have great performance, especially when they have control over the hardware and the software. So I reviewed the applications I use the most on a daily basis. I use Microsoft Office 360, primarily Outlook, PowerPoint, Excel, and Word. Now these are the main apps that I use that aren't made by Apple. However, I do use a lot of apps made by Apple, like mail for my personal email, Keynote, Pages, Numbers, Notes, Final Cut Pro, GarageBand, and Safari for everyday surfing. During the pandemic, I also have been using Zoom and WebEx and Microsoft Teams almost daily for long periods of time for video conferencing and presentations and has been a staple of my daily workflow. Now, I have a lot of pros to this computer, and I want to start with the negatives or the issues I've run into first so it's front in mind. This will help you be the judge while watching if my issues will outweigh the positives based on my use case. So let's start with some issues I've run into. I currently am using a Samsung Odyssey G9, a 49-inch widescreen display, and when I had it connected to my MacBook Pro, it had a dedicated graphics card and I had no issues running it at full resolution. The only issue I had was that I was only running it at 60 hertz. I didn't have any discoloration or screen tearing issues. And I am not doing any gaming or anything that would really need more than 60 hertz refresh rate. Connecting the Mac Mini M1, I had no issues running the Samsung Odyssey G9 at full resolution and it was actually running it at 120 hertz. However, when I was running two video players like YouTube and Netflix at the same time, or even Final Cut Pro, I did experience screen tearing and a very annoying pulsing or flashing of the video window. When I moved the window player to a certain point, it would fix itself. Knowing the issue, I am used to it and have been able to adapt. When I use the Samsung Odyssey G9 as two monitors connected to the Mac Mini, M1, I had no issues with different ratios. So I'm thinking that it is the widescreen 32 by one ratio and the high resolution that was causing the issue. Now I have tested this with another monitor which is a 27 inch 4K LG monitor and I had no issues. And I also tested it with an HP NV 24 inch monitor with 1080p and I got the same results. Now the only other thing to note if your workflow does require or need more than two physical monitors, the Mac Mini M1 is only limited to two through a HDMI and a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 connection. Unless you are working in VR and using virtual monitors, you will only be limited to those two physical monitors. 
Now, because my monitor is a massive display, I haven't had the need or want for more monitors in my current workflow. Upon watching different reviews when the Mac Mini M1 was launched in 2020, there was a consistent Bluetooth issue that always came up where Bluetooth connections, connecting to headphones, keyboards, or even mice would drop and could not hold the connection. Now this was supposed to be fixed through software updates, but looking at the issue even closer, it wasn't exclusive to the M1 and have had issues even with the Intel versions, which makes me believe it is the design and materials of the housing. Now this didn't affect all users, but some speculated it was also where the Bluetooth module was located on the Mac mini and where it was placed in context to the Bluetooth peripherals that made the Bluetooth connection intermittent. Now I have my Mac mini M1 mounted underneath my desk to give me more desk real estate. When I first connected the Mac mini, I connected my Logitech MX Master 3 mouse and MX keys through Bluetooth with no issues. After a month and a few regular updates, the Bluetooth connection did start to drop and I started connecting my MX keys keyboard with the Logitech wireless module. That being said, I've had no issues when I have one Bluetooth connection paired consistently. So I'm guessing it might be an issue with multiple Bluetooth connections and is able to stabilize at least that one connection. For the past three weeks, I have reverted my MX keys through Bluetooth and haven't had any issues of drops as of yet. Now, if that changes, I'll let you all know in the, strip sh in the description below. Now, I currently am running my Mac Mini M1 on Mac OS Monterey version 12.2.1, and I never completely shut down my Mac Mini, and I let it sleep when not in use. I know with any computer, the RAM can get congested and needs to be rebooted. With my MacBook Pro 2016, I rarely rebooted, but during the pandemic, I did reboot more than usual as I was using it more as a desktop. With the Mac Mini M1 for the last 90 plus days, I have had to reboot the Mac Mini M1 a few times due to slowdown and assuming the RAM was getting filled that made it run not as smoothly. Now this was occasionally, but did seem just slightly more than I had to reboot my MacBook Pro in the same time period, enough that I noticed. Okay, I know some of you might be thinking I'm totally regretting this upgrade. So let's switch gears and talk about what I love about the Mac Mini M1 through my experience. My daily workflow with Microsoft Office has been amazing. Having that 16 gigabytes of RAM does come in handy when running multiple Excel files, PowerPoint presentations, and multiple Safari windows while running a Zoom call. It really doesn't skip a beat. One thing that was really impressive is when editing 4K footage in Final Cut Pro. The Mac mini configuration that I have is a 16 gigabyte version with 512 gigabytes of hard drive space and I use a one terabit external SSD that I use to edit off. When editing on my MacBook Pro with the same SSD, it takes some time to render files. And in preview, on the Mac mini, no issues rendering and preview is smooth and seems as good as editing on the actual SSD on the Mac mini. It really doesn't seem like you're editing on an external drive. Also, the Mac Mini M1 is silent. I've never heard the fans on this machine kick in and turn on. Compared to my MacBook Pro, when editing 4K, it sounds like a jet plane is flying through my office. When exporting footage from Final Cut Pro, it is noticeably faster than my MacBook Pro. For me, I expected the Mac Mini M1 as a budget option of Apple's lineup to be fair and probably the same and maybe slightly better in real life performance. Now I am absolutely impressed and know this Mac mini M1 based on my experience will last me for years to come based on my current workflow. So do I regret purchasing the Mac mini M1 for 2022, especially with the newly released Mac studio? Not at all. Yes, I did experience a few issues, but the main issue was more or less the monitor. 
and I am using and have been able to adapt to it so it's not as much of an issue. Now, if you have a similar workflow that I have working from home and want great value, the Mac Mini M1 with 16 gigabytes of RAM is a solid choice. I know with future updates, the Bluetooth issue I experienced will get better, and with a future video, my update might reveal no more Bluetooth issues at all. So if you found value in this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you are notified when I upload a new video. If you have thoughts and comments about your experience with the Mac Mini M1, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe, stay awesome, and I'll catch you in the next video.